Well, deja vu. You might recognize this air conditioner. Same one my friend had a bit of trouble with when I was on vacation, ran into, and we, we got it running and fixed and charged up. I fixed the leak on the high side, but I figured we needed to monitor it. Well, it's down. Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, again. where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button, and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're released for you. All right, back up on the roof for another round with this little ten seater unit. Seems that it failed again. I think we're probably low on the refrigerator. I'll check it out. Let's see. Went ahead and pulled the cover, and everything looks okay there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my gear and check it out. Grab my refrigerant, get it going. Okay, kind of checking this one out before I get started. Last time I replaced the high side shader valve. Looks like I should have replaced the, the low side as well. Here's the high side. Okay, customer's been called to turn the unit on inside. I had them turn it off since it was a call out here. Let's see what's going on. Figured to give it a chance to cool down if the compressor had overheated. This one I think Should have heard the compressor kick on. Um, gonna discharge the capacitor. What I'm gonna do is disconnect the red wire that comes from the compressor and the. Well, first I'm gonna discharge the capacitor. I'm gonna check for continuity first across this. This uh, deal. We've got a brand new capacitor. Everything should be fine there, but I want to check this uh, contactor first and verify that we've got continuity on from the bottom to the top. As the contactor is sucked in, that's fine. And that's fine. Okay. So, I'm going to disconnect the Start wiring. And we can test the, co the capacitor. So it's the microfarads. And I'm just going to verify that we've got our 35. 34.5, so that's good. And then I'm going to disconnect the coming from the compressor, the red, the red wire. One right here, front. So now, now only the fan is going to run. So we disconnected the, the compressor. We can leave the common hooked up to the compressor. And now we disconnect in the start. Start wire. Position that where it's definitely not going to touch anything. That's the key. 
and this way it'll run okay. just the fan and we can cool that compressor down assuming it's overheated this should only take a few probably maybe five minutes and just the fan should run no compressor. I did have to turn the compressor off. So I'm hoping that we don't have a dead compressor. I'm going to start hooking up my gauges, just being real careful for our hot wires here. Gauge is closed, gauge is closed, gauge is closed, gauge is closed. By the time I get all this hooked up and everything, if that compressor had overheated, it should reset its thermal switch. Pressure about 60. side. it overheated. I brought my laser thermometer with me. I could have uh, aimed it down in there and given it a shot. But all right, I'm gonna disconnect. If it doesn't start, then I'll have to regroup and try again. I don't feel a whole lot of heat coming off of there. Let's hope. 
It's a re-discharge the capacitor. The capacitor holds the charge in it even after the power is disconnected. So. Here's our start wires re hooked up again. Red run wire from the capacitor. The detector looks a little there we go. Alright, we're ready to run. Just open. Come on, buddy. It's not throwing the breaker, so we don't have a dead short. Again, compressor could just be overheated. I can re-disconnect these. I'm going to be tightening those leads up a little bit. I will let this run a little bit longer. Like that. Just position everything where it's gonna be okay. Give a little a little juice. Maybe I can cool the compressor a little with a little a little juice. Alright, run the fan just a little more. Preventative maintenance has paid off pretty well this year. I haven't lost one single compressor or one whole unit yet this year. It's been a pretty good year. This one's a newer unit, but it's given me some trouble. A newer, older unit. It's probably about six years old, seven years old, something like that. Check for 220 volts on the contactor. Volts AC. A morning job and a little bit of shade, so it's a good thing. Yeah, I don't 
don't, I don't feel much heat coming off the compressor. We just charge. Tighten up those leads a little. Discharge our capacitor again. Go ahead and test that hard start kit. Some microfarads. This lead seemed a little loose as well. Here we go. Let's see what we got. 48.1, sounds good. Okay. We'll tighten those leads. There's the start wire. Right there. All right, here's helping. Come on, buddy. Here's helping. We need to pull the lid and see if get a feel of the compressor and see if we're going to need it. I'm going to go ahead and re-discharge the capacitor again. Pop a few screws. Get in there. Touch the compressor wiring. Check the compressor. gloves for now so that would get all sweat and build up. This is nice and in the shade. That definitely helps. At least we know, you know. It helps to know. So I need to pour some cold water on there. Right. And the fact that it's getting hot suggests that it's not a wiring issue. Unless it lost the start wire, which I don't think so. so it's there we go. We'll reset there. I'm gonna go ahead and at least now that I know I have a little more faith behind what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull again that the uh, start wire and the, the red. Run a wire, put the other things back together. The other way would be to go get ice. And it definitely can't all be easy. And 
at least this one is in the shade and it's a little cooler this morning so it's good all right now we can plug it in and we'll run it and i'll wait about 15 minutes fast deal to take the lid off on these little thin here units so not too big a deal. Everything's a little easier when it's cooler out. one unit on the other side of the roof that had a fan baffle screw come apart. I'll see if I have a better screw for that, see if I can fix that up while I'm waiting for this. Here's the unit the other day that the feet just telling me that I need to straighten this up a little bit better. Just like that'll be good. Just like that. A little stronger on this fitting. Oh yeah, one other thing is I wanted to pull this wire out from under there, which wasn't even under the tab, but okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make that better. Looks like everything's looking good now. Nice and solid. Nice and uh, buffered against the sound. Good old Palm Springs day. Starting to get hot once again, but not too bad at the moment. Okay, 8.45. We're ready. Pull it. Uh, hopefully by now. Hopefully, hopefully, I will discharge the capacitor again. Reset everything. Start wire. Hard start kit. And the red wire. Go. We're ready to run. Here's hoping. Give it a little shot of juice. All right. And here's hoping. Nothing. Oh gosh. It's not good. Man. Why? I'm gonna need to go get some ice. Discharge and disconnect those. It's very frustrating. The ice would cool it down much faster. Oh, 
shooting. All right. Guess I should have peeked at the wires while I was in there. But the fact that it was hot. that it's hot. Ice on it. It's gonna be a trouble one. Definitely they can't all be easy. Feels okay. I'm sure we have no disconnected. Yeah, I can start wiring disconnected. You don't. Just, uh, anyway, I need to go get some ice. Get ice on the compressor and cool that puppy down. Right. Okay, I went and grabbed my bag of ice, which I kind of accidentally spilled. Get this set up here. Compressor is still way, way hot. Got some loose ice 
and I got the bag, so and I got some a little bit loose from the bag. Since a lot, and I'll put the bag on top. I'll put some down lower. Seems my trick of just turning the fan on just just wasn't doing it fast enough. The whole thing is just totally, totally warm, to totally hot. So it is what it is. But at least at least uh, we can kind of know what it is. Put it there for a second as I pour some cold water on the top. Okay, I'll put the ice back on the top. It's going to be a little time. Tricky one. Maybe 10, 15 minutes. The ice will pull a lot of the heat out of that compressor, so. At least the fact that it's getting hot suggests that the compressor is not bad. Just, you know. Now while that's going, I can kind of start leak searching it, leak test around the coil to see if there's anything going on in the coil. I kind of don't think so. More likely at the evaporator coil, but let's take it up here. I'll put my sensitivity up to the maximum. It starts off with the minimum. There we go. Wow. Adjust that sensitivity down a bit. dirt or Bye. Uh -huh. 
little tricky. some loose ice in. Gonna put some cold water again. Put some loose ice in and I'm gonna give it a shot. And then, oh shoot. My water buddy. Come on. Don't be like that. Save me a drink. Last little bit. Alright. A couple pieces of ice on the top. Good. Just spin that fan just to make sure. Yeah, it's good. Okay, I'll go ahead and plug it in and see if we start. Here it goes. Here's open. Yeah, the pressure's on. Whoa. That was a tough one. <laughs> We are way low on refrigerant. Look at, we're almost empty. And see the water running off. We're gonna survive. And it could be that I opened the gauges and I think it would have equalized with the pressure in the tank. But odd one. Wow, look at this bend here. I mean, it'll survive it, but you know, kind of crazy. Is this me or is it? Kind of a leak right there. It's weird, right? If I do it elsewhere, it doesn't do that. Huh? Wonder if my leak's right there. Grab my. Leak tester. 
it would be a fairly easy pump down <laughs> and repair. Let's take a look. Awfully weird. Let's see. I'll drop my soap bubbles after a little while. That's the that way as well. up anything there. That was on the minimum setting instead of maximum. degrees. Refresh it. 90. So we should be about 130 on the high side so we're good right where we're at. It's nice and cold. We're about 133 so that's good. So now I was just uh, locating the leak. Now that we've got some pressure I'm going to try running through the areas that I was checking earlier and I'm going to check inside I'm going to also go get my soap bubbles
bag for ice, I might just keep the bag in my in my in my bag. Something to carry the ice in. Let's see what our pressures are. We're holding. Good. Go ahead and turn my gas off. Looks like I'm going to survive another day on this one, but I do need to. I need to find that leak. I need to find what's going on. It. my gas off here and uh, detach my hoses gotta get a glove Search inside for the leak. Seems good so far up here. Put this all back together. And I need to search inside for the leak. I didn't find anything on the outside. It doesn't mean there's nothing there. It's just yeah, I didn't find anything out here. all the screws back in the lid. Yeah, they're nice and cold. That's great. Alright. Go around and 
get all the screws in. This line here, it should definitely be insulated. It sweats because it's cold, so this one definitely needs to be insulated, but right now we're searching for this.
Yep, so we found our leak here. So now uh, a pump down, down can be done on the compressor. The refrigerant we recovered into the compressor and then the coil replaced. Or the refrigerant can be recovered and then the, the coil replaced. Uh, or the refrigerant can be recovered and, and or the unit pumped down. And then a repair can be attempted on the coil. And this one is right where it passes through the, the, uh, the metal portion. Uh, that's going to be a tr pretty tricky one. This one, I'm probably just going to have the coil replaced so, in the works of getting estimates for that and getting all that done. And, uh, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Well, at least we found the leak. You know, don't want those things to keep jogging. Yeah, it's important to get these fixed. lose any more freedom. A quick search of my YouTube channel, you should be able to find a bunch of material that will be helpful to your maintenance needs and links to tools and parts used in the videos can be found in the descriptions below.